Uh, welcome to the session today. Um, I'm Ramya. I'm a product lead with uh, Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, in short, uh, HOT OSM. Uh, HOT is a nonprofit uh, focused on humanitarian response uh, through open mapping efforts. Uh, and all, that, uh, all the um, humanitarian response that we do, all the mapping efforts, be it um, uh, crowdsourcing, like mobilizing contributors, um, or forging partnerships, or uh, be it the capacity building, or uh, any uh, products that we build around uh, the humanitarian response. Everything is uh, centered around the idea of uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so OSM, um, if you're not familiar with this, it's called the Wikipedia of Maps, and it has over 8 million registered users. Um, and the number just uh, steadily keeps increasing on a daily basis uh, since the inception in uh, 2004. Uh, and there are like a wide variety of users registered on uh, OSM. Uh, they could be just uh, casual mappers uh, who uh, make the map better, like uh, always make sure the map is up to date, or they could be business users, um, corporates, uh, non-profits, uh, governmental organizations, or just the tech community, um, and so on. So uh, with Galaxy, uh, we want to ensure um, OSM data output uh, is available, is mo avail more available, accessible, and in a ready-to-use format for uh, all these uh, different kind of uses. In the context of OSM, uh, the term data, um, the our data output itself uh, would refer to like a variety of stuff. Uh, it could simply mean uh, raw map data or uh, pre-processed information that could be uh, derived from this underlying map features. Uh, so with Galaxy, uh, we want to cover all this uh, data output types, all this uh, different uh, data types uh, from OSM and uh, make it more accessible and increase the ease of use uh, for all these uh, different kinds of users. So that's the why for Galaxy. Now, how do we want to do this? Uh, how do we want to increase the uh, accessibility or increase the ease of use uh, for OSM data output? We want to reduce the dependency on multiple data platforms. There are like different tools. OSM is a thriving ecosystem. There are lots of tools to derive different kinds of data outputs that any user wants. Uh, we would want to reduce the dependency on different sources and instead provide uh, all of this all of this data accessible through in a easy to use format uh, through galaxy work uh, just a little bit about like uh, uh, how uh, people uh, rely on uh, ex uh, different tools within osm uh, ecosystem uh, to derive any outputs that they want um, so there's something called like mapathon that is very common in the osm space uh, where uh, like people gather together like it's, it's an organized editing process uh, people either gather uh, in person or uh, online and contribute to a specific cause they map for a, spe a specific cause um, it could be that uh, during the mapathon or at the end of the mapathon the contributors or the uh, organizers would want to understand the impact they have created as a group um, so uh, maybe like a casual mapper would want to, uh, a contributor for the mapathon would want to refer to the leaderboard, tool like leaderboard. So missing maps, a leaderboard is a very popular tool uh, within the OSM space. So uh, they might want to uh, refer to their statistics, understand like how many features they have created, like how many buildings did I map today, like what's the kilometers of highway map today. Those are some like uh, common statistics uh, for a mapathon. So they would refer to the leaderboard. Uh, but for a uh, um, an organizer uh, for the mapathon, this would be uh, much more, not, not just the leaderboard, they'll have to combine this data from different data sources. So they would derive the data from leaderboard and they would also go to like a tool like tasking manager using which these mapathons are organized, derive the statistics about uh, the time that each user has spent mapping a particular project, a particular area. And maybe, um, and after that, they would also go to tools like Overpass or uh, Planet and Geofabric Extracts to download the data and do any visualizations on top of it and um, present it as, like, hey, this was the impact we created as a group. So there are like multiple other tools uh, existing. Like, so these are some of the popular tools uh, that I mentioned. Maybe like I've missed a few tools as well. Uh, so with Galaxy, we want to cover all these uh, different outputs. Uh, in one place, uh, instead of having to like go to different tools, they should be able to derive all of this through Galaxy. Uh, otherwise, like with each tool, there is a learning curve, and uh, there are like certain limitations and advantages. Um, all of this would be uh, uh, with one tool in place. Uh, we increase the ease of use. The accessibility is more, uh, and um, that's how like we re plan to reduce the dependency on like n different tools and just have like one tool to derive all of the data outputs. Okay, um, 
on what are the uh, set of tools that we have uh, for Galaxy. So uh, with Galaxy, uh, when we say if you want to uh, increase the accessibility and ease of, ease of use, the first step would be to build our own data source. Um, so uh, we have, um, as part of Galaxy, we are building um, a data source called Underpass, which is focused on the uh, current snapshot of OSM, and then a historical database called Insights. And then there is a backend piece uh, which talks to these data sources. And uh, finally, uh, there is a website uh, to um, visualize uh, all this uh, data that we have been capturing in different data sources. So uh, I'll just go through each of this uh, component in detail, starting with Underpass. So uh, Underpass is one of the data sources that we maintain. Um, and it's focused on the current snapshot, the current data that is available on the OpenStreetMap database. Um, so Underpass has a C++ processing script, which in turn ingests minutely files from uh, planet sources, from uh, OSM sources. Uh, so, so these minutely planet files uh, captures what goes into OpenStreetMap database uh, for every minute. So, uh, through this, the script will understand like what was the change that was done, what were the features that were added, what, what, what was modified, or what was deleted. Um, and as part of this processing, uh, the script will update three different uh, tables. So one would be uh, uh, capture all the raw data that's already available on OSM and keeps it up to date. And then uh, there is also statistics that could be derived out of this raw data. And finally, uh, data quality issues. Um, um, so there are like three different focus areas for underpass, raw data, statistics, and data quality. So validation is just like a common term uh, that we uh, use uh, when we refer to the health of the uh, data. Uh, so just uh, call it as the validation database. So that's the focus of underpass. And uh, here I've also included a uh, tasking manager as a data source uh, because the focus for Galaxy is to ingest uh, different uh, data into one place. So not just the... Uh, minutely changes that goes into OpenStreetMap database, but also the, uh, uh, the statistics from tasking managers specific to mapathons, like uh, what was the time the user has spent mapping different uh, projects, and uh, like what were the, diff and the number of tasks or the projects that they contributed to. So this could be combined uh, uh, for a consolidated report um, at the end of a mapathon. And the other data source uh, that we have been building as part of Galaxy is the Insights data source. Unlike Underpass, which is focused on the snapshot, uh, Insights uh, captures the entire history of the OSM database. Um, so all the features that you see on OpenStreetMap uh, has a certain history attached to it. Um, so, uh, the one that you see on the map is the most recent version of that particular feature. Um, but internally, uh, the database, uh, uh, would have uh, multiple versions of the same feature. So I go and create a particular uh, feature, maybe like I add a building, then uh, someone else uh, adds some more details to the building, like a name of a building or address of a building, then that becomes the version two. So uh, all of this becomes a history of that feature within the OSM database. Uh, so with insights, uh, we capture the history of all the features. By, by when I say all the features, like all the buildings, like all the highways, like all the amenities, that's available on OSM. So all of this is captured within the insights database. Uh, similar to Underpass, uh, Insights has a Python processing script. In this case, uh, uh, again, like uh, it ingests files from uh, Planet, uh, the minutely, the minutely files, the change set files, the change files, and the initial loading of data is done through geofabric extracts. So at the end of it, the processing scripts uh, updates one database, which is the, which is the, uh, which is this, uh, all the history of OSM. Um, unlike Underpass, which has three uh, separate stores: the raw data, um, the statistics, and the validation capture. Um, so here we see uh, the data dumps from Underpass uh, could be uh, could serve as a one key product. Uh, so anyone who is uh, interested in uh, running their own analysis on top of the existing data dump. Uh, so Underpass has raw data, stats, and uh, data quality uh, issues captured. All of this would be available as a data dump uh, for anyone to uh, download and run their own queries on top of it. Uh, the Unpass database is about 1.5 terabyte uh, data. Um, uh, we cannot like provide data dumps around insights because it's historical and it's going to be huge to download all of that data. Instead, like uh, just um, we are just starting with underpass. Um, so you could run your own scripts like Python script, you're like uh, with like Jupyter notebook, uh, run your own analysis and uh, generate like CSV, XML, or uh, SQL outputs uh, from the um, underlying data dump. 
so this is aimed more at like technical users or data analysts uh, who want to uh, extract the raw data uh, or like uh, see like some more statistics that's already not available in the past because this raw data is existing there and uh, you could frame the query the way you want to to extract the data. Uh, so some key uh, progress um, on underpass, uh, uh, so that's the QR code is for the uh, GitHub repository, so I thought like you could uh, just scan and see like what's going on. All the code is open source. Um, underpass uh, right now um, captures the um, uh, raw data and uh, data quality issues from OpenStreetMap. Uh, we are still validating the statistics that we are generating as part of underpass. Um, it also has uh, statistics from Tasking Manager integrated into the same data source. Uh, so uh, if you're um, using the underpass data dump, you will have uh, access to uh, Tasking Manager statistics plus uh, the raw data from OSM. Um, uh, and the raw data, uh, the OSM raw data is updated on a minutely basis. Um, uh, for now, uh, we, we don't have this dump available online, but very soon, like uh, in another like um, uh, month, uh, we should, uh, have this available for everyone um, on a weekly basis. So uh, every week, like this should be accessible for uh, people to um, download data. We are also like planning to put this on the Amazon Open Data Registry um, and uh, have uh, people run uh, queries uh, against this database and extract data. On the insights, we have historical data of 45 countries loaded into the data. Um, loaded into the database, and this data is updated once every five minutes. So. Um, there is a lag of about like uh, five minutes to extract like any statistics uh, from insights. Um, and the statistics from insights, we have uh, tested it against like multiple, uh, uh, multiple other data sources and more or less it has been consistent. And we have also run pilot against a few mapathons. Um, the next piece would be uh, the Galaxy API, uh, which is the data retrieval part uh, from the different data sources, from uh, underpass and insights uh, data source. Um, so Galaxy uh, API is um, uh, it's a Python script, uh, uh, so, and uh, it has like, a few endpoints to supply uh, statistics and raw data. Uh, the date Galaxy API could directly be used to build a, a custom front end, or it could be used in other process um, um, to access the data and do any run any analysis on top of it. Um, at present, there are like uh, many of the um, uh, projects that are using the Galaxy API. Uh, for example, this MSF uh, internal dashboard uh, depends on the hashtag statistics uh, that are supplied from Galaxy API. You could see the um, OSM, um, the the statistics, the new buildings, the feature count uh, added for each hashtag listed in the bottom right corner. We are also using Galaxy API as a uh, source for expert tool. Uh, expert tool is um, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, tools from uh, HOT's, uh, yeah, HOT tech team. And uh, here we provide um, a wrapper around the overpass API, uh, like where people could download uh, OSM data outputs in different data format. Um, last month, uh, we released, uh, we made a new release for Expert Tool, uh, wherein it depends on the um, Galaxy API to extract GeoJSON and shapefile formats. The rest of the formats are still dependent on the overpass API. The plan is to replace the rest of the data sources also to depend on Galaxy API. We have seen a marked difference when we made the switch to Galaxy API uh, for GeoJSON and shapefile uh, output formats. Earlier, like downloads, which used to take around 20 minutes. So we uh, tried downloads against uh, in Indonesia buildings. So this used to take, uh, us, take us around like 20 minutes to generate all of the data outputs. And with Galaxy API, we were able to do it in uh, eight to 10 minutes. So there is, there is a marked difference uh, um, with a new data source. And we plan to do something similar uh, for the rest of the data output format too. And Galaxy API uh, also serves as uh, the data source uh, um, for um, the Galaxy website, which is at galaxy.hotosm.org. Uh, here, uh, it supplies uh, the mapathon statistics uh, for a 24 hours time so for 20, yeah for 24 hours time frame, and also uses statistics for a max period of one month. Um, here, uh, mapathon uh, hashtags um, like any OSM hashtag could be supplied, um, or people could directly supply tasking manager project ID. So it's not tied up to a specific instance of tasking manager. Uh, 
if you know like a uh, hashtag hashtags that's used for like a specific project uh, for like different tasking manager instance that could be used uh, to generate a uh, mapathon statistics so it'll be like a consolidated report uh, wherein you know uh, the base map features um, created by uh, each user contributed by each user and also uh, the statistics from tasking manager combined for each user in one place there is also something called data quality issues available for each mapper it flags all the um, uh, uh, date, uh, some like wrong edits or like um, invalid edits. Uh, in this case, we are just capturing uh, bad geometry uh, and uh, bad tag values. Uh, we are just starting something basic there for the data quality. So this is flagged at the user level. Uh, the plan is to uh, have this uh, data quality flagged at a different uh, hashtag level and also the tasking manager project level. Uh, so the API documentation can be accessed from here, uh, where you can you can also like uh, try um, uh, play around with uh, with a few endpoints. Um, so you can switch between two uh, different data sources. The one that we have in the Galaxy website, all the data uh, in the Galaxy website that comes through uh, Insights data source uh, because uh, we are still validating the statistics in the underpass data source. Uh, but here uh, in the API documentation, you can uh, directly switch between the two data sources and uh, see uh, how does it work. Yeah. Uh, and then the website is accessible at galaxy.hotosm.org. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, all the products uh, put together. Uh, we have the uh, data sources, which is underpass and insights, and yeah, the retrieval is done through Galaxy API. Finally, we have the Galaxy website for the uh, near real-time data download, statistics, and validation. Uh, we are also looking for more support from the community uh, on different aspects of Galaxy development. Uh, uh, so we need uh, help with the code development. Uh, people who are uh, interested in software development, uh, they could uh, do C++ uh, for underpass, uh, for uh, Python, uh, for insights, and the Galaxy API. Uh, the website is more like a proof of concept. Uh, it's in a React framework. Uh, so uh, maybe like... Uh, um, uh, there for the website, uh, design aspects would be helpful. Uh, if you're interested in like uh, sketching out wireframes for different data representations, or like holding user interviews to understand, better understand their needs, uh, then uh, that could be the help we can have for website. Uh, but for the rest of the components, Underpass, Insights, and Galaxy API, we need help with the software development, and we'll also need um, help around uh, Translating the user uh, stories into functional requirements or functional requirements docs. Identifying the uh, endpoints, like how do you design these endpoints for the Galaxy API. Or uh, if you're just interested in like uh, testing aspects, uh, you could validate the uh, outputs that are generated from these components against uh, various data sources. Um, or if like data science or like data, an uh, data analysis interests you, uh, OSM is a huge uh, pile of data. Uh, you could help us identify insightful user stories that we could communicate uh, through the website. We are also um, running a working group meeting every month uh, where we um, um, share with the community on the progress we are uh, making with Galaxy. Uh, if you're interested in participating in the working group meetings, uh, that's, a, that's a bitly link to register your interest. Uh, and uh, you can also like uh, mention like which areas you're interested, like be the software development or the testing aspects or the design aspects or documentation. You can also write to us at tech at hotosm.org uh, for further queries. Yeah, um, we are also running a code sprint. Um, we are also participating in the code sprint um, on Saturday and Sunday. I think like it's in a different venue. So uh, we'll have the developers available there if you'd like help with the development setup. Yeah. It's all right.